All right, how to preach the gospel to the Roman Catholics? How to preach the, uh, present the gospel to the Roman Catholics? And uh, we've been studying about it last week. We saw on so many things the Roman Catholics uh, are right, okay? There are so many things that the Catholic Church is absolutely right in their terms. And even in regard to salvation, the gospel, they are absolutely right according to their term. Hmm? They believe in the virgin birth. They believe in the de deity of the Lord Jesus Christ. They believe that Jesus Christ is God. They believe in his shed blood, death, burial and resurrection. Uh, they believe in that. Hmm? And that is very much needed to, for one to be saved, right? And they believe that uh, Jesus is coming again. They believe in Trinity. They believe that the Bible is God's word. They believe uh, that Jesus is the judge of the living and dead. They believe that there is heaven and there is hell. While they believe something in between, but they do believe in heaven and hell. They believe Jesus ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of the Father. They believe in all these truths. And when you say these things, and then we have to conclude that the Catholic Church, other Roman Catholic believers are truly saved. And they don't go to hell. Or because according to what they believe, they believe in all of that. Unfortunately, but that's not the case. The case is they have the right term with a different definition. And that's the most dangerous part. They have the same term with a different definition. And so people who are watching online can go and check for our first uh, study on this subject. And then you can follow the second one. Otherwise, you will not able to get correctly. Anyway, so today we are going to study about... Last week, we studied on... The last time we met, we studied what? Immaculate conceptions and perpetual succor. Right? Did, or what was that we studied? What is that? Perpetual virgin. Okay, that she was always virgin, even after the birth of Jesus. She, uh, uh, they say that she never had children. She was always virgin. And we saw what the Bible says. That she had, Joseph and Mary had um, four sons and many daughters. Right? The Bible is very clear. Now, the Catholic Church teaches that... That was not Mary and Joseph's children, but they were cousins. You understand? But that's not what the Bible says. The Bible is very clear that these are sons of Mary and Joseph. Right? And they say, are they not with us? And how come he has authority that he speaks with authority and all these things? Alright? Just to refresh your mind, let's go back to Matthew chapter 6. Is that in Matthew chapter 6 or Mark chapter 6? Mark chapter 6? Yeah, Mark chapter 6. Let's go to Mark chapter 6. Mary was not perpetual virgin. Okay? Mary was not perpetual virgin. Virgin. She was virgin until Jesus was born. Right? Because the Bible says in Matthew chapter 1, that until they brought their first brought, uh, brought their firstborn son, Joseph didn't knew Mary. Okay? Then in Mark chapter 6 we read in verse number 3, 
and not this the carpenter the son of Mary the brother of James so basically we see that by this chapter 6 Joseph is dead okay Joseph is dead so they are not talking about Joseph anymore Mary is alive is not this the carpenter speaking about Jesus the son of Mary the brother of James now the truth is Jesus is the son of Mary Jesus is not the son of Joseph all right very well spoken by the unbelievers hmm? the Pharisees is not this the carpenter the son of Mary the brother of James it's not saying cousin brother right the brother of James and Joseph and Judah and Simon and are not his sisters here with us not cousins his his brothers his sisters and they were offended at him all right so which means Mary and Joseph lived a normal married life they knew each other they made two babies and they had four sons and many daughters so she was not a perpetual virgin all right and we saw that last week uh, there is no sinless perfection of Mary now the Roman Catholic Church do believe in the sinless perfection of Jesus Christ and we all need to understand one thing as we saw when you speak to the Roman Catholics appreciate the good things that they hold on to if you just try to bash them if you try to show everything that is wrong from the beginning they don't want to sit and listen to you but if you would appreciate the good thing that they hold on to if you appreciate the right thing that they hold on to then they will listen to you the Lord Jesus rebuked those who were wrong but he never rebuked without appreciating first Revelation chapter 1 2 3 4 the Lord Jesus always appreciated he says I know thy works notwithstanding I have few things against you right he knew them he appreciated them he appreciated their hard works their patience and then he corrected them he rebuked them all right and um, so we need to keep that in mind now we saw many things that uh, last week so today what we are going to see is about salvation okay and that is a very important thing salvation now remember the Catholic Church believes there is no salvation outside the Roman Catholic Church right yes or no they believe that there is no salvation outside the Roman Catholic Church but I have a good news for you there is no salvation under in heaven or on earth but there is salvation only in one name it's not in a church but a name the word name is not speaking about a proper noun when the Bible uses the word name it is speaking about the authority and identity of an individual you understand so when we are saying in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit we are not talking about the particular proper name we are talking about the identity and the authority the weight that one carries hmm? and so the salvation and see they say there is no salvation outside the Roman Catholic Church but the Bible says there is no salvation in any church there is salvation on in only Jesus Christ let's take to uh, Acts chapter 16 I want you to know there is no salvation even in Baptist Church only in the Lord Jesus Christ now after you get saved you better join a Baptist uh, Church because that's the biblical church um, okay where are we in chapter 15 or chapter 16 yeah I mean where is that verse that says there is no
well in chapter 16 you know the story Paul Silas and Luke okay Luke is writing so he didn't put his name okay Luke is writing this book the human author and all three are in the prison we are always told what Paul and Silas isn't it songs are written Paul and Silas inside the prison but Luke is with them also even Luke is beaten even Luke is chained even Luke is suffering even Luke is persecuted but Luke is writing he is not putting but then he puts he, he writes us and he uses those um, words okay and uh, so they were going through the market and they find a woman and it was number 16 and it came to pass as we went as we went to prayer a certain damsel possessed with the spirit of divination met us which brought a master much gained by soothsaying now what spirit she has now can you speak the truth by having a false spirit hmm? so just because someone speaks the truth does not mean that they are of God you think the devil is always telling lies about you and me? <laughs> he's actually, the Bible says he's accusing us. He's the accuser of the brethren, isn't it? Day and night he's accusing. Is he just telling lies about you and me? No. He's telling a lot of truth about you and me. To the Lord. He's just a, he's an ongoing accusation. So here she is uh, possessed with the spirit of divination and she is soothsaying, bringing a lot of profit. Verse 17, the same followed Paul and us. See that again? Us. That's Paul, Silas and Luke. And cried saying, these men are the servants of the most high God. Which show unto us the way of salvation. salvation. Is she telling the truth? Yeah. Oh, prophesy. Yes. Be careful. And this did she many days. She did not just say once. It was not a fluke. She went on and on and on. And this did she many days. But Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, I command thee, in the name of Jesus Christ, to come out of her, and he came out the same hour. Okay? Just came out. There was no drama done there. Now, because of that, they were caught and put it in the prison. They were beaten, chained, and they were put. So, in verse number 25, what they did? And at midnight, Paul and Silas, what they did? They prayed. They didn't call the politicians for favors. They prayed. Right? They prayed. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang what? Praise. Praises unto God. And the prisoners okay. heard them. Okay? Now, soundproofing is good. But the neighbors also should hear when you are praising God. Amen? Amen? They should. That's only when the neighbors will know there is a light in the darkness. If you are going to do everything inside, hiding, you are not even the light of the world. You are not a salt of the world. Nothing. You got to be open about your faith. Okay? You have to be open about your faith. And so the name and the prison uh, is this? Yeah, prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundation of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were open. That's a great miracle, isn't it? Doesn't happen all the time. And the keeper of the prison, awaking out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas. 
and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Verse 31. And they said, Believe on... Why, why do you think this man asks this question? This verse is used by many people by saying, You don't have to repent of your sin. Why do you think that verse was... A question was asked. What must I do to be saved? Because he repented. If he was not repented, he would have never asked it. He repented of his sin. He, he knew what Paul and Silas is having is the genuine truth. And he wanted that. So he says, what must I do to be saved? He's already turned to the light, to the truth. And he said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And thy... He didn't say believe in a church. Believe in what? The Lord Jesus Christ. And we all have to be in that position to invite people to the Lord Jesus Christ. And while we invite people to the church, our intention is what? When they come to church, they could hear the word of God. Alright? Okay, let's look for that verse where it is. There is no other name whereby we must be saved. Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4. Come to verse number 12. That's right. Sorry? Oh, thank you. I thought it was 4 verse 12. <laughs> Acts chapter 4 verse 12. Verse 10. Be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom he crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him does this man stand here before you whole. So a miracle took place, right? Verse number 11. This is the stone which was set at the north of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Verse 12. Neither is there salvation in any other. You know, Jesus is a stumbling block to some and to many, he is the chief cornerstone. Hmm? This is a stone which was set at naught of you builder, which has become the head of the corner. This is a stone that can break your head or it can save you from hell. It's a stone. Verse 12. And neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven. No name of Mary. No name of Peter. No name of Paul. Nobody can save you. Alright? Our, our Roman Catholic friends believe that there is a grace that comes from Mary which can save you and me. The Bible doesn't say that. The Bible is very clear. Neither is there salvation in any other. Now remember one thing is, if you're going to say some things like this, in this day and age, a lot of people's, um, uh, what is hurt? Sentiments get hurt. Okay, somebody can take this video because one of you may say this to some of your friends and they may put it on the YouTube and use it against me. Now, but that's fine. But remember one thing is, when you speak the truth and somebody's sentiments are hurt, you better make a choice whether you obey God or you obey man. Don't apologize for any stupid things. If you speak the truth, you stand for it. Hold on to it. No matter how big the heat is against you, stand up for it. Don't chicken out. Don't melt out. 
you cannot correct somebody unless you show them what is wrong you understand you cannot show any uh, the uh, the roman catholic neighbors or the our roman catholic friends you cannot show them the truth if you don't show them what the lie is and for that you may have to take the hit you may have to suffer you know everybody you know jesus was not the most loved man on earth he was hated more why because he said i am truth i am god when he said i am god they took stone to throw uh, throw and kill him you understand and so truth will hurt truth saves but if you don't want to tell the truth to the people i have a good news for you you and i can join and and sell vanilla ice cream everybody will love us right if we sell ice creams nobody is going to hate you but if you want to speak the truth and see life change you may have to get some sentiments hurts in this day and age every tom dick and harry says sentiment gets hurt everyone is a spoiled brat no one is a man enough to stand up and says well if that is the truth we'll take it if i don't like it i leave it we are living in a very sissified world today where people are not willing to debate or have a discussions or sit forth and have a chat and open the scripture and talk about it everybody gets hurt immediately today uh, a, a person that is mocked a lot today a person who is accused and hated more today is the lord jesus christ on the internet and they mock him there is a uh, there is a website called kali mission there is another no conversion this both these websites on the internet all that they do is they mock at the lord jesus christ they mock at the lord jesus christ Hmm? but we know the truth now we are not going to go and unnecessarily fight 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 we want to stand up and speak the truth our job is not to win an argument but to win the world to the lord jesus christ if you take a stone and keep throwing at every dog that is barking you will never able to reach your destination but you will have to man up you will have to become a woman of god and if you say something truth and somebody is hurt you may say i respect you i love you but i cannot apologize for the truth that i speak and if need be be willing to die and that's okay if you're going to die the very next moment you will be in the place where you desire to be how many of you want to go to heaven by the way how many want to die and go to heaven when we become sick we we pray no lord heal me <laughs> nobody wants to go to heaven right honestly <laughs> we all need to be ready to die for christ okay so neither is there salvation in any other for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved okay there is only one name and the name is jesus christ now salvation is not found in the roman catholic church it's not found in a baptist church it's not found in any church it is only found in the lord jesus christ period okay so that is totally and you got to make that very clear because the church did not die for you Jesus died for you. The church did not shed her precious blood for you. Jesus shed the precious blood for you. Hmm? The church did not rise again on the third day. Jesus shed is uh, Jesus rose again on the third day. The church is not God. Jesus is God. You understand? Jesus is God and so salvation is only through the Lord 
Jesus Christ. Another thing you need to make very clear to them, because they believe that the Bible is God's word. Yes or no? Because they say, Devache Uttore. But that's not what they believe. They say that the Bible is God's word, but that's not what they believe. Their dogma teaches that the church is about the Bible. Because they believe the church gave the Bible to the world. Okay? They believe the church gave the Bible. And that's why they can change the Bible whenever they want. Recently, Pope is making, this guy Francis, Pope Francis is making many blunders. And even the Roman Catholics don't like what he's saying. Okay? Uh, many blunders have been made by him and he's very boldly making it taking the Catholic Church totally on a different direction into the direction of evolution into the direction of one world government into the uh, in all wickedness and even the Catholic Church is not liking what he's saying but and that's because the Pope has that authority when he sits on the throne he is Jesus Christ you understand? When he sits on that throne, he is Jesus Christ. Physically, physically present Jesus Christ on the earth. That's what Pope is. Okay? Uh, th that's what Vicarious Philidae means. Okay? That's on the throne. Uh, and the throne, what the Pope has, this is what is written. Vicarious, fully the Jesus Christ on earth. He is the Lord. He is Jesus Christ physically present right now. And that's why they will bow down and kiss his ring. Why do you think people kiss the Pope and the Bishop? Hmm? You know what the Bible says in Psalm chapter 2? Turn your Bible to Psalm chapter 2. You better be careful whom you're kissing. There was a song, I saw mommy kissing. Santa Claus. That's why we should not have Santa Claus. He can't be trusted, right? Look at Psalm chapter 2. Verse number 12. Psalm chapter 2, verse number 12. Kiss the... What son it is? Ah, speaking about the Lord Jesus Christ. You don't kiss anybody. You kiss the Lord Jesus Christ. Not the Pope, not the Bishop, not the Pastor, but the Lord Jesus Christ. Kiss the Son, lest He be angry, and He perish from the way. When His wrath is kindled, but a little, blessed are all they that put their trust in Him. Okay? Now the people will bow down and kiss the Pope's finger, uh, on the, the, the ring that he is wearing and the bishops and the cardinals because they believe that they are Jesus on earth and the Lord is very clear about it you can't worship any man you should not worship any woman you should worship only God and the Bible makes it very clear that we need to kiss the son God manifest in the Flesh. Now, the Catholic Church believes that, um, you know, the Pope can, uh, you know, say whatever he wants and that is the final decision, final authority. Okay? Whenever they want, they can change the Bible because they gave, the, they believe the Church gave the Bible. So, it's not the Bible that is the final authority, but the Church is the final authority according to the Roman Catholic Church. Understand? Now let's see what the Bible says about itself. Let's come to 2 Timothy uh, chapter 3. When you reach 2 Timothy chapter 3, I want you to come to 1 Peter chapter 1 also. Maybe 2 Peter chapter 1. Okay, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16.
Second Timothy chapter 3 verse number 16. What does the Bible say? All scripture is given by the Roman Catholic Church. No, the Baptist Church. No. It is given by whom? All scripture is given by inspiration of God. Which means God breathed his life into the words. What you are having, if you are having a King James Bible today, what you are having today is the very word of the Almighty God. It should not be taken for granted. It should not hold up dust on your table. It is to be loved. It should be delighted. It should be applied, read, memorized, studied, enjoyed, desired. If you want to know God, you need to know the Bible. You cannot know God without knowing the Bible. You understand? God speaks to you loudly and clearly in every day if you read God's word. All scripture is given by what? Inspiration. You see, inspire. Okay. Inspiration of God. And is profitable for what? Doctrine. Doctrine. You see, if you don't know your Bible, you will swing wherever you want. But if you hold on to the word of God, then you will stay with the doctrine. Now, doctrine is very important. Very important. Why people today, most of the churches, don't want doctrines anymore? Hmm? And, and, and because the doctrines will show light to you. It will take you to the right path. But if you're going to stick to the doctrine, then you will not have a mega church. You're not going to have a mega church. You're going to have chosen, quality, godly people. And God will keep cleaning and keep adding. Keep cleaning and keep adding such as who are saved. All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine. Then for what? For? For what? For reproof. Okay? For correction. Godly people will say, well, if I'm wrong and I am corrected, I'm going to take it in the right way. Okay, a lot of people say to me, Pastor, if I'm wrong, please. Now, that's a red flag. When people say, please correct. And how many people told me here? So many people are there, right? A yeah. couple of people told me. And when I correct what happened, you show attitude. Your nose goes big, your ears goes up, and you, you feel like you are more than Jesus. And then after some time, you calm down, right? But anyway, as long as you calm down and not get out, you stay in God's word. All scripture, okay? A lot of people say that. Please correct me. Now, if you're going to be corrected, it will be only according to God's word. If the Bible says you are wrong, then you are wrong. If the Bible says I am wrong, then I am wrong. All right? All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Why is it important? Why do I need correction? Why do I need reproof? Why do I need instruction? Why I need an inspired word of God? I need that. You need that. Why? That the man of God may be perfect. Right? We say, oh, I'm not perfect. I'm, you know, I'm a sinful. Of course we are sinful. Of course we are not perfect. But you know what God is doing? We are all work in progress. You know what God's desire is? That we may become perfect. God is not saying, well, you know what, I know you, you just leave whatever you want and you can give that excuse. I'm, you know, I'm, so, I'm not perfect, I'm a sinner, I'm this and that. But God did not save you and me to be in that manner, to be people who become so humble to give such an excuse. Remember, when people keep using that, it is an excuse for their sin. It is not glorifying God. You know, I'm humble. You know, I'm, uh, you know, I'm not perfect. Of course, we are. nobody is perfect. But God has called us unto perfection. 
He wants, what is the work of the Lord Jesus Christ? To, uh, what is he doing? To bringing us into an image of the Lord Jesus Christ. Right? Positionally we are perfect. Progressively is working on us into perfection. And one day we will be perfected completely. Hmm? And so let us be humble, but let us not be so humble that we lie with our, hu our humility. Okay? That the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. God says, hey, I want you to be perfect in your doctrine. I want you to be perfect in your doctrine. I want you to be perfect in the word of God. I want you to be a student of God's word. I want you to learn. I want you to study. I want you to read. I want you to enjoy. So you, when you will able to, when you see something, hear something and find something, you know what it is. You understand? And the only thing that can correct us is the word of God. The church cannot do it. The church, will, can, the church can be corrected by the word of God. The word of God cannot be corrected. Uh, why today we have modern Bibles, so many modern Bibles? Because the churches believe that they can correct it. That's why we have modern Bibles every day. Each one correcting each thing, right? But the same people, you know, how about if you are, you know, buy a new car? Okay, you buy a new car, you buy a Honda City. Okay? You buy a Honda City and you go buy a new car and in the car what do you get? You get a catalog, right? Or you get a brochure, what do you, what do you that manual? You get that manual and in that manual you can read that and you can, you know, you'll able to fix anything and they, they guide you how to this. What instead of Honda City, I, I give you an electricity book. Just one difference, no, what Honda I removed, I put electric. Right? <laughs> it's no big uh, this. Is it? But no, people will not take it. Who wants to put their hands in a live wire <laughs> after reading an electricity manual? Right? No, we want Honda City. But people have no such respect for the word of God. Today churches are changing Bibles. Bibles after Bibles. Bibles after Bibles. And they say, oh, just a little bit here and there. Small little change. Small little change here. Small little change there. Because the church today believes that they can change the Bible. But God gave the Bible for our correction. So we may be corrected. That we may have instruction. Understand? So the church did not give us the Bible. God gave us the Bible. The Catholic Church did not give us the Bible. Uh, the Baptist Church did not give us the Bible. The Satan's Church did not give us the Bible. God gave us the Bible. You know where the Bible was before the Bible was written? Where was the Bible when the Bible was written? Before the Bible was written? In where? What? In the mind of God. In the mind of God? In the beginning was the? Ah. And the word was? Yes. And the word was? It was right there from the beginning. You know how God created everything? Word. Yes, in the mind of God. It was in heaven. The Bible says it is settled in heaven. Psalm 108, right? You know what Psalm 138 says? Look at that verse, Psalm 138. You won't find that in a modern Bible. Look at that. Psalm 138. Did you get it? While you are there, I'm looking for another verse somewhere. Alright, look at Psalm 138, 
Verse number one, I will praise thee with my whole heart. Before the gods will I sing praises unto thee. Before all the false gods, I'm going to worship you, O God. I'm going to give praises to you. Okay? Verse two. I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy now look at that next sentence. For what thou hast done? For thou hast done what? Magnified what? Thy what? Thy word. Above all thy name. Even about the name of Jesus. Even about the name of Jehovah, what is magnified? The word of God. Because it is only through the Bible I know we Jesus is the Jesus of the Bible. It's only through the Bible I know who is the right Jehovah. Because there are many false Jesus in the world today. There are many Jehovahs in the world today. I want the true Jehovah. I want the true Jesus of the Bible. And so what God did to judge everything what is right and wrong, he gave us a book. He didn't give a church to judge everything. He gave us a book to judge everything. You go to the constitution, you go to the government, you go to the Supreme Court. What do they have? They have a book. Right? Based on that, the country is going to function. You cannot change that. If you want to have a driving class, what they give you? A book of rules and regulations. You cannot say, I got the Holy Ghost. I, God told me, you can put whatever you want. You know, one guy uh, in Morjim, I was witnessing to one Pentecostal fellow. And he was a wacko. He said, I got the Holy Ghost. And I don't, want to li I don't have to listen to anybody, any go government, any country, any, any law. So I said, so okay, if the traffic rule says you, it just one way um, and you cannot drive this way, will you still drive? He said, yes, because I got the Holy Ghost. What a stupid fellow that must be, using God's name in vain. Hmm? Using God's name in vain. And so, so in every apart departments in every departments we have a book be it football you have rules and regulations you whether it's science you have a book whether it's electricity you have a book for our life we have a book given by god hmm? and that book is magnified about all the names of God. About the names of God. Be careful, people who say, My Jesus, my Jesus, my sweet Jesus, my loving Jesus, but they don't love the Bible. That's a wrong Jesus that they are loving, not the Jesus of the Bible. People who love the true Jesus love God's word. And that's why they can call Jesus as Papa and what? Daddy. Right? So just Jesus is becoming a Jinga Mami for everybody today. There's no love for the Bible today. And they'll call him whatever they want. He's the Almighty God. He's the King of Kings. Go, go and call Narendra Modi my daddy. And see what happens. Hmm? There's no honor for the Lord Jesus Christ today. It's, it's more, most of the modern churches have become a joke. We are talking about the Catholic Church and they will call the Pope as Papa. They went another extreme. <laughs> right? Another extreme. Only God's name, God's word is magnified above the names of God.
But the modern Bible has taken that away or changed it completely. Anybody has a modern Bible here? Can, can you give me something over there? Good news. Full of bad news, right? Someone called it a living Bible. It's totally dead. <laughs> There's no truth in it. What is this? Uh, this fellows may have it. Give me a... On your phone? Thank you. Okay, this is fine. NKJV. Do you have good news? Oh, it's okay, it's okay, forget it. Okay, anyway, so... Okay, just go and get it. Since you stood up, actually. <laughs> so, they believe that the Catholic Church, the, the Roman Catholic Church believes that they gave the Bible. But the Bible makes it very clear that God gave the Bible. Okay? Uh, now, since you are already having Second Peter, I want you to come there. Second Peter. See chapter 2. Uh, chapter 1, sorry. Second Peter chapter 1. Now this is not criticism, this is education. Okay, we are comparing, we are seeing, and we see what is wrong, we see what is right, and we are doing it with love, speaking the truth in love. Look at Second Peter chapter 1. Second Peter chapter 1, look at verse number 16 onwards. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables. When we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of this, Majesty. Now, these people were in the Mount Transfiguration, isn't it? They saw when the Lord Jesus Christ came into glory and appeared before them. They were on the mountain when the Lord Jesus went up to heaven among, in the midst of 500. Verse 17. For he received from God the Father honor and glory when there came such a voice. This is in Mount Transfiguration. Such a voice to him from the excellent glory. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And this voice which came from heaven, we heard. Okay, they heard it. And we were with him in the holy mount. Verse 19. We have also a more sure word of prophecy. What is that? The word of God. More than the visions... More than the audible voice, we have a more sure word of prophecy. Hmm? Whereunto ye do well that ye take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place. You know what the apostles are saying? Hey, hey, there is this day that's going to come. We are all going to be dead. We will not be alive. We won't be giving you anything. But here, God gave us the word. And here it is. And in our absence, when there is darkness in this world, when there are no prophets pr prophesying anymore, where there is no apostles bringing the inspired word anymore, all that you will have is more sure word, more greater than the prophecy, more greater than the vision, more greater than the audible voice. That is the written Word of God. You know, especially in our state, what is the greatest problem right now? The great fight and why, why um, families are broken. Why? 
why the fights among the families today come on don't look at me as if you don't know properties yes or no yes. properties my half meter is gone my one meter is gone he encroached into my properties and there is a fight in a lot of families are divided today families don't talk to anybody there's a lot of issues going on all over this land and then where you end up where do people end up in the court now in the court the judge is sitting there and what is he wanting what is he wanting for you to prove that it is yours okay. evidence of what document, document. what is it <laughs> <laughs> now that is true <laughs> it's bribe <laughs> okay <laughs> And they want document, evidence of document. document. Now, when you give bribe, yeah, you, you may get your works done faster and quicker. And even if you're wrong, maybe you'll be a writer. Okay? But the court of law de demands what? Evidence of documents. Now, if he goes to say, if you go and say, you know what? I've been fasting and praying. Jesus appeared to me. And he said, the other five uh, 50, 500 square meter also belongs to me. Jesus told me in a vision. Will the judge says, yes, yes, yes. Jesus said, take it. Yeah? Or he said, the Holy Spirit spoke to me so audibly, clearly. Even my mother heard the voice. Right? And the mother will say, yeah, Baba, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, you go, oh, you go, oh, you go. Right? And then you go to the judge and the judge says and the mother may say and the son says and the daughter says I heard a voice from heaven and what the judge will say? Document. Written word. And then some people may become saying and then there will be a white ink on it and some forged document and what it says? Why it is? Why is it white ink here? Why is some mistakes here? What he wants? A genuine document. Isn't it? To prove in the court of law, you need a what? A genuine document. Not audible voice, not visions, not prophecy, but a written word. And that's what God gave us. A more sure word of prophecy. A genuine document. Where there is no error in it. And that's what God gave you and me. And the Catholic Church did not give us. Baptist Church did not give us. Almighty God gave us. Alright? And so they say to us in verse number 19, We have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto you do well, that you take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. Until the rapture, you stay put to the word of God. Verse 20, how did we get it? Knowing this verse, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation, that the church does not have the right to interpret it, the Pope does not have the right to interpret it, no one gives these things, it's no private interpretation, no prophets, no modern day apostles, no modern day prophets. Verse 21, for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, not how man wanted, but how? But holy men of God spake as they were moved. Means what? Inspired by the Holy Ghost. That's what God did. Okay? Moved by the Holy Ghost. Hmm? So the Bible was not given by the Catholic Church, nor it was given by any other churches, but it was given by the Almighty God. And God used man. The Bible was there even before the Catholic Church came into existence. In fact, the Bible was there in heaven. Hmm? I'll show you that verse. The Bible, and the Bible says the word of God is settled in heaven. Sorry? 
Yes. Come to Psalms. Verse 2. Okay. I got Maccabees. <laughs> I got Surak, I got Judith, Tobit. All right, Psalm 138, it says. Psalm 138, verse 2, in the Good News Bible, it's a Good News version. I face your temple, I face your holy temple, bow down and praise your name. Because your constant love and faithfulness, because you have shown that your name and your commands are supreme. Your names and your commands are supreme. Totally wiped out, totally washed out, totally manipulated, totally in error. You cannot play with those things in the law of court. No judge in the right mind is going to appreciate that and accept it. Hmm? And the world today, worldly churches will change the word of God. Look at Psalm 119. Psalm 119. Verse 89. Forever. What he says? Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. And people are changing it. God says, hey, I've settled it. I have settled it. Okay? Corrupt the word. Take Second Corinthians chapter 2 verse 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 17 You think the modern versions are come just now? The people are corrupting and perverting the scripture just now in the last few years? What happened when Paul was the apostle? Second Corinthians chapter 2 verse 17 For we are not as many which corrupt the word of God better but as of sincerity but as of God in the sight of God speak we in Christ when during apostle time, there were many people who were corrupting the word of God. Paul says, we are not among them. We are not among those people. We speak with sincerity. We preach with sincerity. We handle the word of God with sincerity. We do not corrupt the word of God. By the way, when did the corruption start? Come to Genesis. Genesis chapter 3 Genesis chapter Got it? While you are in chapter 3, I want you to come with me to chapter 2. And I want you to go to verse number 16. That's the first time God gives a command to men. <laughs> so when God gives a command for the first time, what man does? We'll see. 
Verse 16, And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden, thou mayest. Right? Thou mayest. Everything you can eat. Freely eat. You don't have to pay. Everything is free. Verse 17, But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. evil. Thou shalt not eat of it. Hey, you can eat all the hundred. But that hundred and one, you should not eat. No, I need that only first. <laughs> right? That's the one that I want. And the Lord God said, It is not good that... I'm, uh, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For uh, Now look at that. Look what God says. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Any, any, any doubt in that verse? God says you should not eat. If the day you eat, you will die. That's it. He did not say anything else. Now, now we are in chapter 3. Now let's see how manipulation takes place. Okay? Verse number 1. Chapter 3. Now the serpent was more subtle than any key beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Hey. <laughs> Isn't it? Hey. Has God said, Ye shall not eat of the tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden. God is said, You shall not eat of it. Correct? She is perfect. Now, now you know she is a woman, no? Huh? She, she likes masala, isn't it? Now what she does? Neither shall he? Did Jesus say that? God didn't say that. But she thought she'll help God. Hmm? Neither shall he touch it. So she put one, two, three, four, five words into God's word. And changed it. Lest he die. And the serpent said unto the woman, He shall not surely die. For God does know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. So the day you compromise God's word, Satan knows, okay, now it's the right time to take them and lie to them. The day you manipulate God's word and play with God's word and move away from God's word or, or do something more in God's word, and not let the God's word be as God's word and change our life. When we try to play around with that, Satan enters in. The moment he understands that we are manipulating God's word, Satan enters in and he takes us to another direction. That's a scary part actually. Verse 6, And when the woman saw that the tree was good for eat, food that it was pleasant to the eyes and that to be desired to make one wise she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto a husband with her and he did eat hmm? so the fall she took it is the lust of the eyes lust of the flesh pride of life i'm hungry it's good for food it looks nice i'll become like god Right? Lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, pride of life. Whatever sin that we face in this world has three things. Lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, pride of life. Pride will destroy you. Lust will destroy you. Eyes will destroy you. That's why God says it's better to pluck it. Hmm? And... Uh, that's why we need to be careful. We live in this wicked world. We have to allow the word of God to help us. We have to be engaged in God's word and God's work. And have godly fellowship. 
that we are accountable and God will protect us. Hmm? So anyway, we see that they, they say that they believe the Bible is God's word, but they don't actually believe that the Bible is God's word. They believe the Bible is the church word given by the church and they can change and they and they believe whatever the pope says is final authority not what the bible says understand whatever the pope says is final authority not what the bible says right there's so many things to talk about but we'll talk about it the coming week all right let's pray <clears throat>